Raise your hand if you know what the red warning lights were on the dashboard of a car truck. Back before we had dials showing temperatures and things, they used to use the red warning light, right? It was called the idiot light. And when that red warning light came on, it meant that your engine was heating up. You didn't have enough coolant or oil, or maybe you broke a fan belt or split a radiator hose. And a reasonable person would, would pull the vehicle, car, or truck over the side of the road and deal with the problem so you didn't burn the engine up. Even, even a Mercedes would burn up if you didn't have enough coolant and oil and a fan belt and a radiator hose. Then, of course, the village idiot, that's why they call it the village idiot light or the idiot light, uh, they'd be driving along, they'd see that red warning light come on. they say, I don't have time to deal with this. So they whip out their pliers, they cut the wire of the red warning light, and they keep on driving. Now, even a Mercedes will burn up if it doesn't have oil, coolant, a fan belt, and a radiator hose, right? And so you really have to be the village idiot to do that. Nobody in their right mind would do that to their vehicle. How many of you know what pain is for? Raise your hand if you know what pain is for. That's pretty good. Most of you know that. Pain is the red warning light for your body. When you get pain in your foot, your ankle, your leg, your knee, your hip, your back, your shoulders, elbows, wrists, and fingers, your body's saying, don't use those joints, don't use those bones, don't use those muscles until you fix them. It's absolutely criminal, absolutely criminal for a doctor to write you a prescription for a pain reliever, an anti-inflammatory or muscle relaxant, or any of those combinations without rebuilding the bones and the joints and the cartilage at the same time. If they just give you a pain reliever, just give you an anti-inflammatory and or a muscle relaxant without rebuilding the joints and the bones at the same time, all they're doing is cutting the wire of the red warning light. You're going to wear those bones and joints and cartilage out faster and faster and faster. It's actually a negative to be taking painkillers and anti-inflammatories without rebuilding the joints and the bones at the same time. The reason why I say no carbonated drinks, and I've been doing that since 1964, is because carbonated drinks actually will neutralize your stomach acid, and you cannot efficiently absorb minerals, digest protein, or absorb vitamin B12 without stomach acid. You have to have stomach acid, like battery acid. Doctors have the criminal belief that you don't need stomach acid. They give you all these drugs to get rid of your stomach acid, antacids, and they give you drugs to stop producing stomach acid, right? They don't want you to have stomach acid. Absolutely criminal. You can't digest food and absorb food without stomach acid. I know most of you knew that carbonated drinks neutralize stomach acid. If you remember back 25, 50, 75 years ago, when somebody would ask their doctor to say, look, I just ate, a, I overate, I overate a Thanksgiving dinner, and I have heartburn and indigestion, what do I do? And that was before they had Zantac. They say, well, take some 7-Up, drink some ginger ale, drink some club soda, take, take some uh, sparkling water, because the carbonation will neutralize your stomach acid and give you some relief, and it would. Now, if you do that three times a year, drink a carbonated drink three times a year for Thanksgiving and Christmas and Easter because you overeat during those holidays, that's okay. You're going to survive. But when you're drinking two, three, four, five, six, eight, ten carbonated drinks a day, you're not going to survive because over the long haul you will not be able to absorb the nutrients. You're going to get some horrible combination of terrible diseases. This came out in June of 2000, and this is a Harvard study on 460 junior high school girls in 9th and 10th grade, and what they found out was that those junior high school girls who drank one non-cola carbonated drink every day, they increased their risk of fractures and osteoporosis as a teenager by 300%. They found out that if they drank one carbonated cola drink, a cola carbonated drink every day, they increase the risk of fractures and osteoporosis as a teenager by 500%. Now, do you think that this is more dangerous for teenagers or adults? It's much more dangerous for adults because you only have 25% bone matrix, and you're very, very slow to recover, where teenagers have 40% bone matrix, and they can recover in a week's time.